a new study has raised the possibility of a surveillance system to detect airborne coronavirus particles. Researchers from NTU and NUS say this would help provide early warning of the risk of infection, particularly in hospitals and nursing homes. Singapore has seen mega clusters emerge in these settings before. Now, in the study, devices like this one were used to collect air samples in two inpatient wards caring for COVID-19 patients. They were deployed for eight-hour periods at various locations, including toilets on window sills and next to patients' beds. Traces of the virus were found in over 70% of air samples collected, compared to only close to 10% when surface swabbing was done in the same areas. And for more on this, we're joined by the scientists from this project, Dr. Irvan Luhung, Senior Research Fellow at NTU, and Associate Professor David Allen from NUS. Gentlemen, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, Dr. Luhung, the team says air surveillance is especially useful in hospital and nursing homes. Uh, with the high ventilation rate in such settings, you know, mask results. Yeah, actually, it's uh, one of the questions that we were asking when we started the study. Uh, would the high ventilation rate actually challenge our ability in collecting the uh, virus in the air? So that's why we, we tested our study in a hospital environment where the ventilation rate is very high. And the result actually came that we were able to detect it with a very good detection rate. But if you look at it from a different angle, when we actually use the surveillance system in real life environment, when you actually want to ass assess a space, whether a space is safe or not, ventilation rate is actually one of the factors. So it is expected that you detect less of the virus in a highly ventilated area if you compare it to other indoor spaces that, is, uh, that has a lower ventilation rate. Dr. Lu Hong, scientists in Singapore mm -hmm. have been using mm -hmm. wastewater surveillance as well since as early as February and March last year uh, to sort of look mm -hmm. out for viral material from COVID-19. How does this method compare to that? Yes, I think the idea or the principle is the same. It is a larger scale surveillance system where you can test a large number of people at one go instead of testing a single person one by one. And they both have their strengths and challenges in terms of applicability in real life settings. But if there is one comparison that I can draw uh, here is that uh, wastewater sampling is a bit retrospective. If a person is infected with the virus, it may take a bit of time before the viral signal can be detected in the wastewater system. While uh, this airborne surveillance actually involves us placing the air sampler uh, in the space that we want to check. So if there is an infected person in the space that is spreading the virus, we can catch the, the virus at the time. So it, it actually provides us an earlier warning system. Uh, Prof. Allen, I want to come to you. Uh, more than 70% of the air samples collected were found to contain the virus compared to about 10% on surface swabs. What does this tell us about how the virus behaves? Well, I don't know that it's telling us much about the virus, John. Um, the sampling from the air is a large volume. It's a large biomass that's being sampled, whereas the surface uh, area of being swabbed is just a, a small square area over one uh, point in time. So I don't think it reflects uh, on uh, the viability or the amount of virus. Uh, Professor Allen, how then would air surveillance complement the other methods that we've used to fight COVID-19 on, on a wider scale? Well, uh, this is a proof of concept uh, study. It's looking at a variety of ways to, to, uh, to test our environment, to learn what is going on. Uh, this would be handy if, if, if uh, it evolves over time, it becomes more refined uh, in, in using it in areas where there's high risk patients, such as in nursing homes, people that are vulnerable despite the availability of vaccine. Uh, or in, for instance, uh, transplant units, bone marrow transplant units in the hospital. So uh, there's potential uses for it there. There's potential uses for it in planes uh, to, uh, to protect uh, a destination. Uh, we would know that uh, the people on board, even though they've been vaccinated, uh, may or may not have infection, which might impact the, the, uh, the burden on the healthcare system in their destination. And how easy or difficult would it be to scale this up you know, like you said, make it more handy, have it in more locations? Well, I, 
I think over time, uh, the the technique, the equipment uh, will evolve, and uh, it'll it'll become. Uh, while the device we use is quite portable and extremely efficient, uh, these these uh, devices evolve over time, and so I suspect uh, uh, there'll be further iterations. All right. Thanks for speaking to us this evening. Uh, we've been speaking there with Associate Professor. Uh, David Allen from NUS and Dr. Irvan Luhung, Senior Research Fellow at NTU.